We have our some of our students in middle school creating podcasts for their school, which is a really great way to educate the community about what they're doing. We have other students that create videos and we post them on, on our um, websites and on YouTube. Uh, great to have students create content and connect with the community. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. I'm uh, Ray Sanchez. I'm the uh, proud superintendent of the public schools of the Terrytowns. There are about five schools um, in total. We're about 30 miles north of New York City along the Hudson River uh, in Westchester County. Uh, we serve about 2,600 students of diverse backgrounds. My name is Rebecca Cooksey. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Innovation and Technology Services in Lancaster School District. We're located in the north a section of Los Angeles County. We have approximately 15,000 students, all elementary, over 21 schools. Hello, I'm Alina Zachary Ross, Superintendent of Schools for the Ypsilanti Community School District. We have about 3,800 students we're located in Ypsilanti, Michigan, right outside of Detroit. First set of questions that I have for you. How has the prevalence of technology in the classroom or maybe even at home impacted student learning and engagement? Yeah, that's a, the, that's a great question. I think, you know, we've seen um, elements where it's actually helping to accelerate learning and where you can really target and personalize the education for students whether it's in the area of mathematics and literacy, you know, we can really laser focus and provide skill-based kind of support, but also think, you know, create, you know, look at these dispositions that we want to help develop in our students, like creativity, curiosity, and others. And it really is a tool of empowerment for teachers. The balance that we're trying to f figure out is just that, is finding a balance between what is too much technology, that opportunity, you know, in let's just say in the classroom for kids to engage and socialize without the computer in front of them um, is one of those things that we're just carefully trying to think about in terms of the overall amount of um, exposures that students have over the course of a full day, both in and out of school. Well, students having access to, te to technology all the time allows them to look up information, to communicate with their peers and, the and their teachers. It gives them a broader scope of education that they had access to before, because if the library wasn't open, they didn't have the information. Um, if they couldn't find it in the encyclopedia, they didn't have the information. And now all that information is on, at the fingertips of our kids. And um, I think it provides a lot of amazing opportunities for them. The prevalence of technology has really brought out the geniuses that we already have. We didn't have the technology before the pandemic. And our students with access to technology has just engaged them so much and allowed them to have self-directedness. Excellent answer and so true as well. Now, how can school districts deal with social media issues that might originate on a social media app like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, but then create a very real in-person problem on campus that same day or maybe Monday morning when we go back to school? I mean, more than anything else, what schools need to do is, fo first of all, get ahead as much as we can, because social media technology from day to day, every minute, it continues to change. And we need to stay educated on what those changes are, and then in turn, educating our students and our staff and our families about both the power of the social media tool and also some of the precautions that we're going to want to take because of what it might mean for, for students at a variety of grade levels. So I think more importantly than anything else, it's about education. Um, it's not always about like shutting down, you know, and precluding students from being on said tools, but empowering them to use them for what they're intended to do. And what I'll say is for the good, right, to help them um, educationally, so connections with others. You know, it really does help to make sure the world is flat in terms of just opportunities that we can connect with folks both in and out of our community. So um, long and short, it's really about education more than anything else that we need to do. But we have to be at the forefront of this. So problems on social media are a really big problem, especially for our middle school kids. Uh, there'll be like a fight that's posted on social media or, you know, maybe cyberbullying. And then that's those issues are brought back onto campus. 
And so without teaching kids about digital um, citizenship and how to be safe online and how to be responsible, we're going to continue to see those, those issues um, because children don't actually understand the tools that they're using. So we have to be proactive as educators to help them understand the impact of these tools and how to help them use them responsibly. School districts need to deal with social media inside and outside of the school by building on relationships. We always used to talk about relationships, but relationships matter even more right now. If students know they have someone to talk to, they can bring that into the schools by having an adult to go to, an adult to speak to, adult to bring those problems. We have to still deal with relationships, relationships, relationships. So well said. That's so well said. Now let's move on to the positive side of social media. Could you perhaps provide some examples of how your students have used their social media in a positive or maybe productive way that's benefited themselves or the whole community? I would just say, you know, part of the platform I'll reference is Twitter. Um, we didn't do it large scale, but we've seen, you know, sometimes you just start small and hopefully you can grow from there. But we've seen where students are using it for positive to capture stories, to elevate what's happening within the context of uh, our school system. And have served in many ways, like even communication interns uh, for the district using these social media platforms. And as a result of that, quite honestly, where are they, you know, you mentioned this whole idea of like, where are they going in terms of college? This is kind of giving them a, uh, I would say just a dipping of your toe in the water as it relates to communication uh, fields. It might be something that they may want to pursue and or using these said communications in, in other fields that, um, you know, that might use it as well. So we found a lot of good uses for social media for our students. We have our, some of our students in middle school creating podcasts for their school, which is a really great way to educate the community about what they're doing. We have other students that create videos and we post them on, on our uh, websites and on YouTube. Uh, great to have students create content and connect with the community. Our students have used social media to get out campaigns like Okay to Say. They've used um, social media to talk about the great things that other students are doing in our district. They've used social media to tell students to come on back to school when they weren't coming to school after we came back after the, um, the pandemic. So we can use social media to get out messages, key messages that we want to say in school, and we use the voices of youth. We talk about here at YCS voice, choice, and agency. And that voice is what students have understood that they need to use in social media. In the age of one-to-one, -one, how are you preparing students for positive technology use, both in the classroom and at home? Yeah, once again, it goes back to education, you know, really helping them understand. Um, I don't think that one-to-one -one is really the overall solution to the world. Um, it provides, if we're not using it, what I'll say is to really uh, rethink some of the learning opportunities. You know, in many ways, if we don't, you know, computers can very well be just a glorified notebook um, and well, and even more so a very expensive notebook. Um, but what we want to show and empower our students through education and our staff, because they're modeling it for our students, is how these tools, in the, ca in the case of this, um, the one you just referenced, is these one-to-one -one and having access to computers can help our children uh, accelerate learning help them become more curious learners and empower them in ways that, you know, the traditional notebook does not just, again, using the building on the example I provided to. Um, so, you know, we spend time uh, explicitly educating our students around that. And again, it's not just even our family, uh, our students, it's also encouraging our family so that when kids go home, that message is, is, is a line between home and school. And so they're not getting different types of messages, very much, you know, one uniform uh, conversation that we have. Uh, but one-to-one -one is powerful um, if done in, the, in an appropriate manner. So our district is really two-to-one. We have a device for them in the, in the school and at home. So they've got access to technology 24-7. What we see is students being able to create their own product and be creative to engage in their community and connect with their peers. So that access to technology allows them to be more creative, more industrious, and more curious about the world around them. In the age of one-to-one, -one, we're not afraid at YCS to use AI. We're teaching them right now 
how to use assistive technology to be their friend. We used to tell them before to use spell check. Now we're saying we've got to be proactive for jobs they didn't know before. And in the, the future is now. So we're teaching them today how to be prepared for jobs in the future. Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.